<laughs> All right, it's three o'clock, so why don't we go ahead and get started? I'm playing host today, Angela, who typically hosts our coffee break sessions, is doing a conference in Vegas this week, so I am uh, helping out. But the job is really easy for me because today we have Lori Rubin joining us, and she is going to lead the majority of the conversation. She's going to talk to us about wildlife, so I'm just going to hand it right over to Lauren. I'll stay in the background answering questions on chat and, and I'll jump in and sneak it. But Lauren, Lori, take it away. Okay, thanks, JC. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Um, my name is Lori Rubin. I'm a product evangelist for Milio, and I'm a co-photographer with a passion for wildlife. That's my thing. Love uh, <clears throat> shooting wildlife, whether it's in my backyard or traveling to exotic places. <laughs> so you'll see some of my images today. I'm also a photo educator. So I've been, oh gosh, a majority of my life working at software companies uh, such as uh, Milio. And so really, really excited to be here. And um, JC, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself too? Give us a little background on you. Oh yeah, sure. I, I think most people know me, but for those of you that haven't met me before, I'm the customer success lead at Milio Photos. And what that means is that a big part of my job is making sure that people can succeed using Milio. And I do that by um, helping create all of the documentation and education materials for Milio. Even though Angela is the person that actually writes the manual, I do the technical editing and make sure that what we are putting out there actually works. I've been a product expert with Milio for the last four years. I am an underwater photography as a hobby. I've been shooting underwater photography since two, 2003. Uh, and before that, I was a news photographer for a long time. And I work in the video production industry for also a long time. I've been doing education as uh, for photo organization for the past four years since I joined Milio. But I've been a media technology professional all my career, either behind the camera, helping uh, helping with different production crews. Uh, I used to install editing systems in Hollywood for all of the major production companies. And I've also been, like I said, a news photographer and I've even been in front of the camera talented for many, many things. So lots of uh, lots of time playing with media. Yes. In fact, you'll see JC's face on a lot of the videos for Milio, Angela, and Rick Charrington as well. So, all right. Well, and we're going to start adding Loring to all the new ones too. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm really excited because like I said, my passion is wildlife photography. So I get to bring you my passion of wildlife photography, and I love to get organized too. In fact, sometimes I'll just do checklists just to check them off. I don't know if, whether you guys are like that, but uh, I'm one of those. <laughs> We're going to talk today about uh, how we can get organized. And so I'm going to hit some of the high points, but uh, if you have any questions, uh, be sure to ask us and JC, I'm sure we'll have the answers for you. But uh, we're going to start with uh, collecting, bringing all of your images and videos into one beautiful library. We'll talk about connecting your devices together so that you can store those images and be confident that you're not going to lose anything. There's backup options and such, so we'll, we'll review that. Um, I'll also talk to you about organizing and what's the difference between folders and albums and how you can use those to help organize your wildlife images. Also, we'll look at some of the six unique viewing options within Milio. These are really fun from uh, maps to calendar views. I'll show you that in just a moment. And then we'll also talk about keywords and tags and ratings and labels and flags and a few other things. Okay. So the first thing, uh, I just want to kind of go over something so you have an understanding of where your images are going uh, and how best to utilize that with Milio photos. Uh, the first thing you want to do is gather your images. And by gathering your images from all your data sources into a single location, helps to really get organized. I'll show you some of the differences here between your viewing options. These are our viewing platforms, whether you're on a Mac or Windows machine, we support both. Also different types of smartphones that you can view Milio on, as well as tablets. And these are down below here, the different um, media 
So your images might be stored on hard drives, for instance, solid state or hard disk drives, uh, memory cards. There's different types of memory cards for different cameras, for instance, different types of digital cameras from your DSLR, mirrorless and smartphones. And you can also have um, images on your social media that you might want to consolidate and download or network attached storage devices and also scanners. So if you have prints that you've scanned in and are digitized, you can bring those into Milio. Okay, and as far as storage devices and staying connected, um, Milio allows you to connect all your devices into a single network. So we don't force you to be in a cloud. You can actually keep all of your photos on your own devices, especially if you wanna keep those private and you don't wanna share lots of your images to Google or Apple Photos, for instance, um, we have a way to sync all your images together in your devices. And as I mentioned earlier, we do support Windows, Mac OS, Android, and your iOS devices as well. So that pretty much covers everybody, I would think. <laughs> all right. Now let's go ahead and we're going to jump into Milio. I'm going to show you six different views uh, that are within Milio that you can view your images. So we'll go into all photos, calendar map, people, and then we're going to go a little bit more in depth into albums and folders. And I'm going to jump over to Milio so you can take a look here. So this is the Milio interface. Uh, some of you folks have been using Milio probably for a little while. Some may be brand new, but we're going to really focus our attention today, mostly up along here, because I'm going to show you how you can view all of your wonderful images. This is the all photos view. So when you click on all photos, this shows you little thumbnails of all of your images. And this doesn't look very organized to me. <laughs> yeah, it would be very hard to try to find, uh, let's say some lions from Africa, for instance, uh, just scrolling through here. But this just gives you an indication of all of your different images. But what I want to focus here is on the calendar view. This is the life calendar. And I love this because I can see my life in pictures. If I travel and I'm shooting wildlife in different locations, um, I can see the different years, months, and days of where I shot, which is real exciting. And, um, and also, I do want to mention, too, you'll see some people photos in here. I have actually um, downloaded the sample library. And this is something I would recommend for anybody who's new to Milio to start out with. Uh, there's this little question mark up here. I'll just show you where that is. Right now, since I have the library installed, it'll say remove sample library. But if you haven't installed it yet, it'll say add sample library. And this has about 649 images, all different types of photography, different genres of photography, different locations, different uh, uh, dates, for instance, uh, face tagging abilities so you can kind of see how things are structured and you could play around with that without worrying about deleting something or, or messing up anything you just can't can't do that because you can re-download the sample library at any time so that's why you see some people in here um, mixed in okay so we were talking about the life calendar and right now I have it set up for decade so as I kind of scroll through here you'll see there's 2020s and left here's your 2010s this is by year and 2000s, and we can keep scrolling back further and further. So these are now scanned images. And uh, all the way up to the top, if you have some images that don't have dates associated with them in the metadata, it will put all of your images here in the left-hand corner. And that way you can go in and actually tag or add dates to those, and then they'll show up in your calendar. By the way, a lot of these images are from JC. <laughs> Um, so let's go ahead. We're going to go into here a little bit further. Let's take a look at, oh, I don't know, uh, 2012. We're going to 2012. And let's take a look at, well, I think it was in Alaska here in July. And I was, you can see I was at Alaska for a few days uh, shooting photos in Katmai, Alaska, which is a beautiful place to photograph bears, by the way. Um, you take a little a plane, you fly into the river, and then you take a little, I call it a tin can, because it's literally like an aluminum little boat that you go up and down the river and watch as these bears jump in and try to catch salmon. Uh, the last two days we spent at Brooks Falls. If anybody's been there, that's a fantastic place to visit and to watch the bears uh, actually catch the salmon from like on top of a waterfall, for instance. 
So that's really fun there as well. So you can see this guy here. And some of them just stand there with their mouth open like this guy, <laughs> just waiting for them to jump up. But there's a platform there and you have to kind of take turns uh, photographing the bears, but that's a beautiful place uh, to visit. So again, looking at your calendar, you can go by year, month, and day and really drill down, but it's really nice to really see where you've been and take a look at your life from years gone by to now, to the present time. Okay, I think the next thing we'll jump to is we'll take a look at the map view. I'm gonna double click on map. And this is a, another wonderful way to see where you've taken your photos around the world. So you can see here, we've got quite a few images from the folks that have participated and sharing their images with us. Uh, I've got some, JC's got a bunch, and uh, you can see that it's quite a bit of activity going here on the West Coast of the United States and on the East Coast, not much in the middle. So maybe we need to take a trip there. Uh, go visit some wildlife in Wyoming or some places like that. You can look over here. I've been trying to convince Malia to sponsor my trip to, to some of the parks so I can add more to the sample library. Okay, so um, let me go ahead. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to drill down a little bit further. You can see, I call these badges, JC. I don't know if you call them badges, but. Yeah, thumbnails, uh, yeah. Thumbnails, okay. Uh, you can see that there's 80 of them here. Uh, JC probably took quite a few uh, up in Washington area. And let me just drill down here. This is in uh, Yellowstone. So I threw a few of the images up here. And you'll notice here on the left-hand side, there's this little location icon. And I'm gonna just double click on here for a second. Um, it actually indicates that it's mapped. There's a location on the map. But you can also click on this little icon. It's called the Photo Explorer. And this will explore the location on the map. And you can also explore it on the web, which is kind of neat too. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'll zoom back out. And you can see uh, that's where that lands. Now you can, um, if your camera has GPS uh, or geotagging options, it will have the GPS data inside of the meta tag data. And so it'll know where to place these photos. If you have, let's say you scan some images or you have a camera that doesn't do that, you can manually actually tell it where to go. So we're gonna go into folders for a second. I'm gonna go into my Africa folders. We'll see if there's something that's not tagged uh, as far as location. Okay, so yeah, there's a few that aren't. So we're gonna grab a few from Amboseli and I'm just gonna go ahead and click and I'll hold down the shift key for these four images, for instance. If I, um, let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and expand on here. And let's go up into maps. There we go. There's this section here as info map, edit, and sync. We'll talk about edit in a moment. And this is a little mini map. So what I could do is I could either click and drag these photos onto a location or what I find is much easier is just type in a location so that Milio can find it for us. So I'm gonna say, oops, let's do Amboseli. There we go. Okay. I was in Amboseli. No. Oh, I'm sorry. JC, were you going to say something? No, no. Finish what you're oh. doing. I'll tell okay. you. I have <laughs> okay. a trick to share, but finish. I what love you're it. Doing. Tricks are good. Okay. So this is Amboseli. I'm going to go ahead and click on there. And let's just, just back out a little bit. And let's just say this green area is probably where I was at. I'm going to go ahead and click and drag this onto the area. And you can see there's a checkbox where you can say, okay, yes, that's where I want it, or no, we can move it around a little bit. There we go. And if we look at an individual image, let's just go ahead and double click on here for a second. I'm gonna go into info, this is the metadata. I'm gonna scroll down. You can see that little mini map and there's the GPS coordinates. So you can see how easy that is. And now I can start filling in my world map um, to get even more images placed on there. Okay. So, Laurie, what I was yes. going to say is that if you look at the bottom left corner of the map view, there is a button there that says view on tag. And that will show you all the images that are in your Mali library that do not have GPS data associated with them. And it's a really good to-do list if, if one of your goals, like me, is to have the majority of your photos tagged with, a, with the location where they were taken, like those Galapagos photos that you mm -hmm. see from... from that I contributed to the library. That's a great way to find the photos that still require uh, geotagging 
easily without having to, to do that. There's also a couple of ways to do the same in the filter. For those of you that like to use our search or filter mechanisms, one of the search terms is geotag, and it's a binary term. It's geotag uh, true or false. So if you if you type geotag colon true, it'll show you all the photos that are geotag and geotag colon false. Uh, it'll show you all the photos that have not been tagged. And okay. it's uh, geotag, uh, T-A-G-G-E-D. That's geotagged. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, that's what I was saying, but you can tell it because I have that accent. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hey, that those are great tips. I love it. I'm learning more and more all the time with uh, with my layout. It is a really deep program. There's so much built into this uh, that... It's, it's great because you can just do the top level, you know, looking at the maps and calendar views and get away with just doing that, make it as simple as possible, yeah. or you can really dig deep. And like um, JC was mentioning earlier, Angela actually wrote the manual, which is really intense manual. And we have lots of webinars and videos. So if you want to get into something specific and learn even more about it in detail, uh, we do have those resources available. So thanks for that. That's, uh, that's great. Appreciate that. Okay, so let's see, let's jump over to people. And so this is allowing you to actually tag people's faces, for instance, or you can do multiple people batch tagging. Uh, you can do it with animals as well. I, I tagged, I think some monkeys. Um, I'll show you that in a moment and we could probably do some lions. But you can see with Milo here, we've got some tags already. Uh, Carol, for instance, there's eight with her, a couple from me. Um, and then like, here's a monkey. I just typed a monkey. This was shot behind glass at the Oakland Zoo. And if I double click on this guy here, you can see it recognizes it as a monkey, which is kind of cool. So you can kind of go through those. There you go. Um, so you could do one by one. Um, what I prefer doing is actually batch tagging. Batch tagging is like this little icon here that you can click on. And what Milo will do is it'll go through and look at people's faces or maybe some animals that you tagged earlier to try to match them all together. So you can quickly go through here and say, oh, yep, these, uh, these are probably Michael. So I'm going to click on this little space bar up here. Gives you some ideas of who it might be. I'm going to go ahead and type in Michael. There we go. And then just like that, it's done. And as you go through and tag more and more of your images, Miley becomes more intelligent. As you can see, it recognizes this is Michael, even though he's grown up a little bit, which is kind of cool. So those of us who have wildlife and people photos, um, this is a great way to tag your images with face tagging. And just right. to clarify, um, yes. what Lori's doing is brilliant where she's using the, the fact that Malio can find a face of a monkey uh, to identify all the photos that are monkeys, but Malia doesn't know how to recognize a specific monkey. It knows how to recognize a specific person because it looks at the features of that face and, and learns that face. But what Lori is doing is that it's using the ability for Malia to recognize certain things like eyes, nose, mouth, and it's using that as an automatic tagging. We are improving on that ability in an upcoming version of Malio where we're actually teaching Malio how to recognize objects. We're calling it object recognition. And what object recognition is going to do is that Malia is going to be better trained to identify specific animals. So it will automatically tag not just that this is an animal, but that it's a lion. And it'll probably go as far as the species. So for example, it'll say, animal, dog, Great Dane, or animal, dog, Chihuahua, because those are two very different kinds of dogs. <laughs> so look for that in an upcoming release because we're yeah. constantly uh, constantly improving the software. And that will give you an area where you can really differentiate and use the people view really for people and uh, the auto-tagging mechanism for animals and other things like a beach or water, et cetera. But the way Lori's using it to identify her wildlife is actually pretty smart. And, and I never thought of doing that that way, Lori. So thank you for oh. that. Hey, tips galore. <laughs> We're sharing today. 
Um, I cannot wait for this new AI feature uh, for being able to tag like that, especially um, birds. Uh, you know, I'm out photographing birds and there's all these different types of birds and it'd be nice to be able to let Milio just pick those off. So that's really exciting. So I was gonna show you here, here's a lion. I'm just gonna type in lion. Okay, there we go. And then if I press the return or enter key, this will bring up a new person that Milio will be able to identify. So you can type in the first name. If there's a last name, you can add it or you don't have to. And then you can just click on create. So now I've got Lion in my tagging features there, which is really neat. Okay, I think, you know, another thing I wanted to show you before we get too much further is let's go into devices for a second. Let me go into here. Um, some of the ways that I like to find images, and we're going to go into tagging and, and flagging and picking and all that fun stuff, is going under the dashboard under library stats. And here you can see the people that are tagged, for instance. Let's see here, here's my lion. So I could pull up lions if I want to see all my lions, uh, different places and file types. And you can see we support quite a few different file types here and cameras. And this is important because I don't know about you, but I usually remember the camera that I took uh, on a Same trip. Here. Yeah. Went, yeah. Isn't that weird? I mean, I well, don't know. No, no, not at all. I mean, in my yeah. case, um, my cameras don't change that often because mm -hmm. I can buy a new camera relatively inexpensively, but then I have to buy a new underwater housing and those are cost more than the cameras. So I don't change cameras as often as other photographers do. So I can go, you know, five to 10 years with the same camera. Uh, but I was going to ask you as a wildlife photographer, you probably can use this feature even more than I do. And even the lens, right? Because if, yeah. if you're doing wildlife photography for a, uh, in, in, a, in a place where a telephoto is a requirement, right? Because you can't get mm -hmm. that close to wildlife. You probably look for a specific lens versus, right. you know, when we go to the zoo, we're pretty close to the animals there. Um, right. Have well, you found you go, that feature useful, the ability absolutely. to look specific lenses? Yes, I do, actually, because when I go on trips, especially those faraway exotic places, I usually carry two camera bodies with me. So I'll have, you know, uh, a camera body with a, let's say, telephoto lens on it, and right. then another camera body with a wide angle lens, because I want to tell the story, right? And then yeah. I want to get in closer. So yeah, this is a really um, great way for me to just, you know, define, hey, you know what? Um, I took some images with a particular camera and I can jump in and find those and also the lenses. Here's a list of keywords here as well. So this I find is kind of useful um, for those of us who remember our cameras and lenses that we used. So that's kind of fun. Okay. I use that all the time because one of the type of photos that I take underwater is of, of very small <laughs> things. So um, I, I look for my macro photography by just looking for a specific lens. Yep. That's in our camera gear, I tell you. <laughs> it's fun. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about uh, for organizing uh, is folders and albums. So we're going to jump in here. And I want to tell you the difference between the two. So a folder is basically, you're pretty familiar with this on your hard drives, for instance, you probably have your wildlife uh, images and particular folders, for instance, on your hard drive. Milio will replicate or look at the exact same file structure. And then the album would be a virtual collection of photos, like a playlist for your photos. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at both, and then I'll set up an album for you so you can see how that works, because I use those quite a bit. So along the top of the screen, we're kind of making our way through here, there's albums and folders. So if I double click on folders, you can see over here, this is under shared content. This is the sample library I was talking about earlier. And what's nice is you can see how some of these different folders have been organized, for instance. If you look at the upper left-hand corner in this particular scans folder, there's 35 images. So if I double click to get in here, those are the 35 images. Let me go back. Here's organized by year. And I think, JC, is this yours? It must be... Uh, this is a combination of photos from uh, a lot of us. Okay. Some, some are from Rich, some are from myself, some are okay. from uh, Aaron, who's uh, the, one of yes. the data engineers at Mylia, but he's a wonderful birth, -like, uh, birth photographer. And uh, Matthew Jordan-Smith, who is a well-known yeah. celebrity photographer, 
share some of his personal family photos and allowed us to put it in the library. So that's where some of those came from. That's great. Yeah. As you can see, these um, are by year. So these folders are uh, organized by year here. And then let's see here, we've got trips. So you can organize folders by trips, e.g. Australia, Italy, for instance. So you could do that. And then um, this one's just miscellaneous. And there's some different folders here, pets, eagles, underwater. So there's different ways and everybody likes to organize differently. Uh, me personally, I go by dates because I also kind of know when I've been at a place. But again, I can look at my calendar <laughs> to remind myself. But yeah, there's different ways to organize your folders. And just keep in mind that if you have a folder structure on a what's called a vault, and I guess I can just kind of segue into here for a second before we do an album. Um, this is my particular structure that I have set up. So I've got a MacBook Pro, these windows, and these are my attached, or not attached, Actually, these guys are attached down here. These are some of my other devices that I've installed Mylio onto, like my iPad and my iPhone. And um, I've got a cloud uh, here in Google Drive and then a couple vaults. Now, these vaults hold my original image. So if I go into device quality, here's my vaults. So I have all of my originals in that one. I might, like on my iPhone, in fact, I'm going to turn on my iPhone so you can see it sync up. I always love watching it sync. It's just kind of reassuring. I don't know, yeah. but uh, you'll see it uh, sync up here. There's this little question mark. If you're ever wondering what these little check boxes mean, you can just click on that, but see how that is? It's gonna actually upload um, 1,203 images to match and sync with all my other devices. And as soon as that checkbox is done, uh, it's complete, which is really nice. So um, that's actually my file structure there. Um, with the iPhone, here, I don't um, actually, I could do auto-optimize thumbnails or vaults. So vaults original, but those are huge files. I shoot raw with my wildlife images. I don't know about you guys, but they're really large files. It would eat up my iPhone's memory or, you know, just very, very quickly. So what you could do is um, by default, Mylio sets it to auto-optimize. So what that does is it just, um, really keeps your images smaller, about 5% the size of a regular, you know, original file. You can print them out as five by seven prints, and that's certainly large enough to view on your iPhone, tablet, or sharing online, for instance. And if you don't have much room, like on my iPhone here, I set it to thumbnails. Um, they're much, much smaller. And actually you can see here, my vault has 17 gigs currently. And then the thumbnails have uh, really dropped down to 27.7 megabytes. So that's how that works. Okay, so back to folders. I think that kind of explains what folders do. Again, just replicating what you see on your hard drive there. Um, albums is your virtual playlist for your photos. So what you can do is you can actually create an album. It's not adding any more images. Uh, you can have multiple images in each of these albums, and um, it just keeps the file size a lot smaller, but you can organize these really nicely, too. I love uh, using albums. This is called Flutter, by the way. Uh, as you, I'm kind of scrolling right and left through some of these albums, so you can kind of take a sneak peek of what this is. And uh, we're going to go ahead and create a, a album. So let's go ahead. We're going to go into folders again, and let's take a look at... No, let's go into Africa for a moment. Okay, and what I think I'll do is let's just grab some zebra photos, for instance. So I'm gonna go ahead and click, and I can hold down the command or control key, kind of clicking through to, oops, select non-contiguous type zebra photos here from Africa. And um, I can either right click to pull up this, these options here, or down on the bottom right-hand corner, also, you can pull it up from there. And this is really handy if you're doing this on your, let's say, your smartphone or on your tablet. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and add it to an album. So you can see this section here, Add To. I'll click on Album. And um, actually, under Wildlife, we'll leave it under Wildlife. I'm going to add a new album, and I'm going to call it Zebra. The zebras. And I'll click on Create. So now under Albums, Wildlife, there should be a Zebras album there. So we'll go ahead and click on continue. 
and let's go under here, albums, wildlife, there they are. These guys are telling it a joke. <laughs> um, but there you go. So you can actually create albums and organize these any way you want, whether it's uh, by type of animal, a trip that you've taken, a, a, an event, for instance. Uh, this is great. So JC, you use albums quite a bit? or I do. I do. And, and the way I organize my folders is by trips, because most of my wildlife and underwater photography happens during a trip. So I can tell, I can put all my photos in the specific trip. And I do it that way because there's a lot of advantages, both within and outside of Malio of using folders in that way. For example, when I go to a trip to, I went to a trip to Galapagos in 2021. And all the photos that I took from that trip, whether they came from my phone, from one of my cameras, or from my wife's devices, I added to that folder then I can select show folder as calendar event, as you can see over there on the right hand side of the screen in the, in, in the details panel. Halfway through the details panel, there's a switch that says show folder as calendar event. So when I have a trip, I put everything for that trip in that folder and then select that. But mm. sometimes I want to see, for example, all the photos of every dolphin that I've taken underwater. Now, the actual files, the actual photo for every dolphin is going to live in the different trip folders, Galapagos, Bonaire, um, Fiji, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all the places where I've seen dolphins. But the album allows me to grab every dolphin photo and put them all in one organized view of all the dolphins. Mm -hmm. And I could go even further with albums because I could create a, a dolphins album that is then subdivided into dolphin species, for example. But the actual file would still live in the folder associated with that particular trip. So it's a way to have your cake and eat it too. <laughs> That's great. Thanks for explaining that. That's wonderful. Okay. So now that we talked about albums and folders, let's dig into um, the actual tagging. If you want to go in and tag your images, for instance. So I'm going to I'll click on one of these line or line is here. If I double click on here, over on the right hand side, there's this little panel that you can expand on. And if you click on this little label tag here, or rating, right below it, you can see you have flags, rating, labels that you can select from. If you condense this, you can also access it here. And there's an option under these little double dots, which is more, see more there, quick review. So if I click on quick review, you can actually scroll through your different images and using keyboard shortcuts such as P for pick uh, for your flags or one through five rating on your keyboard, um, you can actually go through really quickly and rate these. Um, and this will give you some, um, some more descriptions. And by the way, anytime you see a question mark here, it's kind of like a tool tip almost. So you can click on it and it'll expand and give you more information. So you can see here, these have been labeled with, it looks like three stars, five star, a flag. So those have already been rated. If I go back, let's just go back for a second. Um, and we'll go into an album that I know does not have, or folders that I know does not have some ratings. And let's go into here. Um, so I could just go through and you know click on this guy here. And I'm gonna go ahead and pick or reject. And I'll tell you how I use these uh, flags and stars and labels. And I'm sure JC uses them probably a different way. And maybe you have your own system. But what I do is when I come back from a trip or a workshop, the first thing I do is I sit in front of my computer, I bring all those images onto my external drive so that my Leo can see them. And then I'll go through and I will pick the ones that I wanna edit. And usually, I don't know about you, but even after you know shooting for many, many years, let's say 700 images, I'll maybe have five hero images that I want to go back in and edit. So right. I go through and I pick them. Do you do that, JC, same, same way? I do. I actually do two things. I reject all the ones that I know are not going to be salvageable, right? Like they're completely out of focus or somebody stepped in front of the camera or, you know, maybe I was taking a photo of a zebra and a monkey decided to photobomb the photo. 
that would be a good problem to have, right? <laughs> uh, so I do use the flags for rejecting and accepting photos that I want to keep. Uh, mm -hmm. For the photos that I want to edit and try to uh, improve in some way, I use a yellow label. Yeah. And that's okay. what's great about the labels and the star rating is that you decide what they mean for you. So that's mm -hmm. one of the ways in which I personally use them. That's great. Yeah. So there's different ways to do it. Also, your star ratings, one through five, five usually indicates the best, right? So I will indicate, you know, five star for, oh, love these. I'm going to print them. My client wants to buy some. Um, I'm going, you know, they're sentimental value. I would never delete them. They are keepers. So I would um, use a five star rating, for instance. Four might be, okay, it's good. Might need to make a little adjustments. And then three is probably salvageable. I don't want to delete it. And then the twos and ones are usually, I just don't do anything with ones. I might just start and just indicating, you know, at some point I probably want to delete these. So that's how I use the star rating. <clears throat> For me, the, the flags down here are the labels. Red is important. Yellow I'm waiting on. Uh, green could be landscapes, uh, blue portrait, and purple uh, could be wildlife, for instance. So there's many different ways that you can organize your images. That's really up to you. But it's nice to have those options available so that you can go in and select. And then you can go in, filter, and search for um, you know, particular uh, labels, for instance, uh, flags that you might want to uh, visit. So let's see here. I just clicked on this filter. And I'm going to go ahead and go under, let's say, rating. I want to look at all my five stars. And let's see here. It's pointing to the calendar. It's under all photos. There we go. So here's all my five star ratings. These are my best. I think they're my best. So you can see that. And you can also look at labels. So if there's any important ones I might want to take a look at, um, you could do that. And also, uh, oh, that's why there's two of them. Yeah, turn out flags. the five turn out the five star rating and then it'll show you yep. all your room. Yeah. Because what, so. what 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 you can do with filters is that you can combine. So you can say, show me all of my five star photos that have a red red label. Or, you know, mm -hmm. I use categories, for example. So you can combine a category and say, show me all my underwater photos that are four and five stars. Uh, but they're okay. additive. So when you when you put multiple parameters in a filter, those parameters are additive. So you're saying, show me this and this and this, not or, which would say, show me four star photos or, or red yeah. photos. It's an and. Yeah. But this is a great way to locate images if you want to, uh, to find your best images or maybe a particular person uh, through all of your calendars or whatever uh, sections down here that you want to choose from. Okay. Excellent. And, Excellent. Yeah. Um, let's see. I've got, let's go back to my presentation here. I talked about folders and albums. Okay. We talked about tagging. Those are the different The other one I want to talk to you about is keywords too. So we talked a little bit about this earlier, um, but just be aware again that the metadata can be updated. You can go in and add titles, descriptions, um, IPTC information. So that is up to you, but uh, especially if you guys scan any images, you might want to go back in here and add dates and such. So that's great. Okay, let's see here. I think we're getting towards the end here. So uh, again, some of the real key benefits uh, to having your wildlife images uh, within the Milio Photos application here is that you can have all of your photos on any device. So if you're uh, let's say you're out in Africa and you guys are out to dinner somewhere. You don't have to take your computer. You've got your, your iPhone with you and you can, or your Android. You can share your images and don't have to worry about losing a photo or video because we do offer that backup uh, between devices. You can well, easily find, oh, go ahead. And, and this is one of my favorite things about Malia, right? Because, um, and I'm sure as a wildlife photographer, you can relate. So I'm an underwater photographer. So what happens to me is that I go on boats with other divers and other underwater photographers all the time. And we are constantly exchanging stories about the last trip or the one photo we didn't get or the photo we did get. And it's so powerful when I pull up my phone 
whether we're on a boat without internet connection in the middle of the Pacific Ocean or we're at a restaurant somewhere, I can pull up my phone and go to exactly that trip or exactly that photo, you know, use a keyword for every shark photo that I have and do a quick search in Malia on my phone and show other divers all the photos of that particular wildlife, that particular animal, or that particular location using using the map view. That is super, super useful. I make this joke that um, a photo is worth a thousand words, right? Mm -hmm. Well, it's only worth a thousand words if you can find it. And Malio makes it really, really easy to find that photo and replace you talking about the gorgeous elephant and the baby elephant photo that you took in Africa with just show it, showing it. So mm -hmm. that's great. That's a really good point. Fantastic. Well, I want to show you one more thing before we go and uh, answer some of your questions here is the ability to edit your images while on the go. Speaking of that. <laughs> Um, so we're going to go back up here and over here on the right hand side, you'll notice uh, below the flags and such is the ability to edit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick one of my images. In fact, I'm going to search for an alligator. There we go. So this was a huge alligator in Africa. He was just on the banks waiting for the animals to cross. And um, yeah, he was well fed. That's for sure. <laughs> So by clicking on here, you can see it's a little bit uh, overexposed. I don't have a lot of contrast, pretty flat image, but you know, I don't want to toss it. Let's see what we can do with it. So over on the right-hand side, MyLeo offers the ability to click on some of these little uh, instant uh, fixing icons, for instance. So auto enhance or auto color, you can fix red eye. There's a brush feature. You can choose before and after, and you can reset it. Down below, there's a histogram. She has a nice bell curve there. There's presets that you can select from. Um, and then there's this option here of being able to adjust for your white balance, whether you want to cool your image down or warm it up, adjust for tints and different uh, tones. So you can add a little contrast, uh, brighten up your whites, add clarity so you can add contrast in those midtones. And then you've got some ability to change color or um, add vibrance or saturation, convert to black and white. So I wanted to show you though, this is pretty darn cool. And I love using this for scanned images as well. And that's this auto color. You can see that little droplet there. There's also a preset. I'm just going to click on this and automatically add some contrast, a little saturation to it. And then I move over to the left. This is auto enhance, kind of lightens up my image a little bit and bam, I'm done. Well, I thought that was pretty cool. So you can go through and with scanned images in particular, that really does a great job with that uh, auto color. Um, it'll just uh, take those warm, flat images and add contrast and color. And they make them look really nice. So with this tool here, if you have Mylio, for instance, installed on your um, smartphone device, you can edit your images there or on your tablet or on your computer. It is available to any device that has Mylio installed on it. And uh, thanks, everyone, for joining us. Yes, thank, thank you, you so much. All right. Bye-bye. All right. You have a great day, everyone. Thanks, JC. Bye-bye.